Hello, X-Traders, and we are going to do a quick recap of the tickers that we set out to analyze and trade in the month of November. Those were Bank of America, Occidental Petroleum, Pfizer, uh, AT&T, and maybe XLF, but in the end, I actually just uh, stuck with uh, Bank of America. So, okay, so let's dive in real quick here and switch over to Bank of America. So I actually am a little bit late to this recording. This is, uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, this should have been done on uh, end of Friday or even Saturday of uh, last week, but I was traveling, so I didn't get a chance to um, to uh, to look those and, and, and record a follow-up or, or trade review, so here it is. Okay, so uh, as a lot of with a lot of tickers, the general down the general trend has been down, but we were bullish on AT and T. And the reason we are trading defensive, we call these defensive stocks in November, is because we expect the defensive sector to be the one to <clears throat> to bounce first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, even though tech uh, high growth stocks will bounce. Uh, eventually, uh, we expected uh, this sector or this really uh, type of asset, which is usually blue chip companies, very solid, slow growth, more oriented towards dividend uh, and organic growth uh, than the other ones. Uh, we expected these to be, <coughs> excuse me again, something that we could play more to the bullish side. So um, this is basically... The, let me zoom in, and this is basically uh, the chart on the daily for AT&T, and we saw that this broke out above uh, this down, this uh, shorter, uh, shorter downtrend, uh, which was kind of like an inverse megaphone, right? So it's like or like a wedge, and um, and, and it broke out of it quite uh, uh, quite bullishly, and uh, it's starting to take out. Remember, we talked about uh, swing highs and swing lows, so it was starting to take out a couple. Actually, this one um, was unable to take this previous swing high, uh, but we did. Uh, we finally did here. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, uh, the reason why we took it is because it, it basically broke through this swing high. And so, if it was going for that second one, which it did, last week, which was like November 3rd, November 4th, then we figured, okay, then this is pretty bullish because it already took out this swing high and it's going to take out this swing high. So uh, we were probably expecting it to take out this one, that one, and that one, which is why we have them charted. Okay, so let's zoom in. Um, and <clears throat> I actually just went ahead and uh, updated these uh, on my mobile on, uh, was it Sunday night, I think? So I have Actually, I did two things, okay? So uh, if you look back to the video uh, starting November week one, you'll see that we took long plays on all of these. Uh, and that was because in October we were mostly bearish and we were looking at NEO and we, um, we were very bearish on EVs and tech and high growth and speculative in China. Um, we said, okay, now we're going to go for some longs, but if we're going to go for longs... <clears throat> It's going to be in a more stable um, type of asset, and that's why we chose these defensive stocks. So I had only played the upside. Uh, in other words, I only drew up a trade plan or you know this little trade tool thing. Uh, I only set them up for the upside. And uh, what I did on Sunday night was that I actually adjusted this for this week, obviously, uh, because this is basically the review of last week. That's what we're going to do right here. Uh, and then I added the uh, downside play as well. Okay, so just to make sure uh, that this is what we're looking at, because what we're going to do first is go over um, last week's, uh, which was basically here. Let me go ahead and draw uh, a rectangle to get you guys' focus on this. Okay, so this is the first Monday out the gate. I'm going to go ahead and draw this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There we go. That's the trading week uh, for, uh, oops, that didn't work out well. 
Thursday, Friday. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that was the trading week, uh, the end of the week, the one that we're reviewing today. This the the on 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 Saturday or Sunday, I review the plays that we took the the previous week. Okay. So Monday and Tuesday were <clears throat> you know days that didn't uh, really do much. Uh, Wednesday was uh, a little bit bearish, and um, and, and then. Uh, Thursday and Friday. Thursday when the, is when the CPI came out, so you can see how it uh, it just really took off, and uh, and a Bank of America uh, stock really really dug those CPI numbers. Um, you can see it was very bullish uh, Thursday and Friday. Of course, so was everything else pretty much. And that was one of the uh, key things about this rally was that it was very uh, broad, so it covered a lot of sectors. So it's um, it's it's deemed to be a stronger, more um, stable, I guess you could call it, or basically more positive rally if it encompasses every sector because you're basically, you know, you're basically saying, okay, the economy as a whole is going to be driving upwards, not just a particular sector. So this is the banking sector. Uh, but uh, in the Thursday and Friday rally, uh, I believe the, the breadth, what it's called, the breadth of that market rally uh, basically, the, the industries that it covered, the number of tickers that were up versus down, which is you'll you'll usually see them as gainers versus versus losers. Um, you know, it was very broad across every industry, so it was very very positive, very bullish, and there it is. So, um, and I believe our play, which has now moved, because like again, like I said, this one was actually the one on. Uh, this is the one that I already drew up for this week, which is the second week of November. But if you recall, these were our uh, our previous levels. This one here was our target at 38.69 ish, and this one was our entry at uh, 37.51. So basically, this would have been down here, like so. All right. So that is what uh, Bank of America did. The entry level. Was right here at 37.47. We definitely entered um, on Thursday, and we closed in on Friday, and it was very bullish um, and very profitable trade. Okay, so what we do? Remember, we draw these, and we're going to start with a with a fresh one uh, at the end of this video with a couple of uh, tickers that I drew up for this week. <clears throat> we're only going to use as examples, but basically, you know, you find your levels. And once you find your levels, you decide which is the next resistance above the current price target that needs to be broken. And then the next resistance above that is your price target. Okay. And if you're going to play to the downside, then you you pick the nearest support to your target to your current price level that needs to be broken in order to head back down to the next. Uh, support below that as your price target okay so this was the week obviously very bullish starting on Thursday and Bank of America did extremely well um, I, I, I believe I did take that trade and I posted it in the X trades app uh, okay let me hit undo here and reset this where it was okay so basically what I did was at the end of the week here I grabbed my uh, long tool and I moved it up so the next resistance is my you know my entry to break and the next, um, uh, the next uh, resistance above that is my price target. All right, so uh, that is what we did, and we also added the downside play. So, uh, what happened during this week? This is already Tuesday, so let me see if I can grab this tool here and carefully move it. Yep. Okay. There is Monday and. Uh, I don't like the way this snaps to the candles, but whatever. So here's Monday, and here's Tuesday, and basically it hasn't done much. Okay, so it it opened uh, 38 bucks and then it closed back 37. It opened 38 or so bucks and it closed down 37 again. You know, so it hasn't really done anything. Uh, this is going to be very choppy, and uh, we are still. I am still bullish on this because I do expect this to take off tomorrow after the PPI print. The PPI, which is the producer price index, is uh, basically a precursor to the CPI in the sense that whatever gets manufactured uh, also uh, incurs in uh, <clears throat> uh, increases, increases in price. 
So there's also inflation on basically on the supply side for companies that manufacture stuff. So um, or, or provide services as well. So that is going to be the print for tomorrow. Uh, and uh, and this is still going to be my trade plan, either to the upside or to the downside. OK, so uh, again, the it's just a rinse and repeat. You know, you find your last candle. You look for support levels, which we've gone through how to draw them above one, two, three, four, five support level uh, resistance levels above one, two, three, four, five support resistances, uh, support levels below. Sorry. And uh, basically, you know, you just move your trade tool up and down. All right. Uh, and you take the trade either way. <clears throat> of course, that's the technical, the simplest technical part of it. Uh, you have to add into that. Uh, as we mentioned, there's a lot of other technical analysis that goes into, um, you know, giving you an idea of uh, what momentum is like, uh, if it's oversold or if it's overbought. Um, I I ran into a few um, uh, indicators. I'll make a video probably at the end of this month dedicated exclusively to some of the new indicators that I've been looking at. Um, and um, and and so there's a lot of you know we talked about the trend being number one number two the support and resistance levels number three um, you know the the indicators the uh, and the price patterns that you can find so we haven't looked at any price patterns yet um, you know I normally when the market is this choppy it's kind of hard to get a price pattern in uh, like in this case there's really nothing even on the daily. Uh, you know, that doesn't look like anything other than, you know, it's broke above uh, this inverted megaphone or whatnot. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, price patterns, um, at least not on the daily. Uh, so just for fun, let's drop into the one hour and then we'll move on. Uh, okay, so this is going to be, like I said, uh, the video that we'll look at at the end of this week. Uh, that's the, basically the first half. That's Monday and Tuesday uh, right there. <clears throat> okay, so this is the same um, see, I'm, what I'm trying to find is if there's any price patterns that might pop up because we haven't really uh, seen any in the ones that we've been uh, looking at. It's not like you look for a price pattern and then try to, you know, try to stock because of the price pattern. Uh, at least that's not what I do. Um, so I don't see anything here that I would uh, consider, uh, you know, a clear enough price pattern to say, oh, okay, this is a, you know, inverted, nothing, uh, descending, ascending, nothing, a flag or anything of any kind. So um, nothing on Bank of America. Okay, but the bullish play definitely played out last week. And uh, this week, we haven't been able to enter any of the trades because it's just basically been, it's been a no trade. It's been, you know, hanging around this, you know, demilitarized zone or whatever, a uh, zone where it won't be a trade to the upside and won't be a trade to the downside. Okay, so let's switch over to Oxy. So Bank of America was a, um, a winning trade, if you will. Oxy was a, uh, a trade that... Let me zoom out to the daily that we did not end up. Uh, well, let me see here. We ended up not taking it basically because uh, it didn't break through our entry level, and because we only had, <clears throat> yeah, because we only had the bullish uh, play on uh, since last week. Then it was a no play last week, or a no trade. Sorry. Okay. Let me see here. Zooming in here quite a bit. Okay. All right, so we had been seeing Oxy trade in this channel, and um, it had basically this is last week, so this is uh, let me get rid of this ad here. This is Wednesday, so this is Monday right here. So basically, Monday started out uh, pretty bullish, but it didn't reach, um, and I believe that I actually didn't move the the long. Uh, trade tool for this week. I left it intact. So this was our opening on Monday. And even though we did close above, <clears throat> um, uh, 
even though we did close above, I actually there was profit enough. If we zoom into the one hour, there was a little bit of profit enough that we, if we would have taken the trade, I'd actually did not take this trade. To be honest, um, let me see here. I believe it was. See, so this is Monday, Tuesday right now. This is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Monday. Here we go. Right here, I recognize this pattern. So this is where the entry, uh, this was our entry level for the previous play. So I actually did move uh, the trade plan for this week. But um, sorry, this was the level. This was the entry level. So there, I remember it because there was enough of, um, so let me see, you can check the video if you guys want to, 74.99 more or less. And it did open. I did uh, close above this, so there was some room for profit up to here. And then after this point, it just went underneath and it hit our stop loss. I believe it hit our stop loss right here. Um, just you know, remembering what I saw on Sunday night, uh, I remember that this uh, little bullish candle on this uh, POC line was when we actually stopped out. So we would have gotten in and made some profit if we would have taken that profit, considering this level as a short-term resistance. Otherwise, we would have gotten stopped out of our trade right here. And once we were out of the trade, then it basically just melted down to Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and then it never really uh, closed back above this 74.99 level. So that would have been our oxy. Uh, and basically what I did is I actually did adjust the long and I added the short. And this is what we're in right now. Again, a no trade. It didn't close significantly below this entry level. It didn't. It never broke through this uh, resistance up here. Uh, but I am still rather bullish on Oxy for the rest of November and December, actually. So uh, I'm going to keep this um, uh, as a bullish play probably into next month. Okay, so that was one winning, one losing trade. Uh, sort of losing because we actually we got stopped out. But... Um, uh, Bank of America, Oxy, the next one I believe was Pfizer, yeah, and then the last one was AT&T. So here's the Pfizer. Pfizer was also uh, a play that did not go well, healthcare in general. Okay, so here <clears throat> is what it did um, starting Monday, on Monday the 7th. Uh, and this is the one that I actually left the play the way it was. So this was a no trade, as you can see. Uh, this was, sorry, that's Friday. There, that's Monday. It did not break our entry, or did not close above that entry. Uh, this was Tuesday, same thing. This was Wednesday, Thursday. Even with the bullishness of the market, it did not close above. And then Friday, it closed right on it. But obviously on Friday, we probably, we, we definitely, not probably, we definitely would not have taken a Friday expiration. Remember that all of these trades that I'm working on have um, end of the week uh, Friday expiration dates. Okay, so I left the same trade plan, and this was actually uh, in play today. And I did not take it. I wasn't ready. But if this closes, if this opens above, um, and uh, you know, it very well might, above our entry level of 4760-something tomorrow, Wednesday, I'll actually take this. Um, I'll actually take this, especially with, with what's going on uh, over there in Europe, I'm definitely going to take this up towards that 50 level. So uh, I'll be watching this one tomorrow. Sorry, this is Pfizer. This is not Oxy. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if, if this closes, again, like I said, if this closes above our entry, which was 4760-ish, I'll definitely take this play and, uh, and see if I can ride it up to the 50. Because again, these are defensive stocks. I expect people, uh, investors, to be uh, um, uh, you know diving into these uh, assets for dividend, for safety, for um, you know, slow growth versus stable growth. So it's that's the trade-off, and uh, and Pfizer is a very solid candidate. Okay, and actually, if we look, eh, you might. This is what we we're talking about. You know, uh, you don't want to force it too much, but I believe. Where are the trading patterns? I, I can't, I haven't used them in so long. I believe that might be an inverted head and shoulders right here. So uh, from here to here, although that's that's a big stretch. I didn't really draw that right. Okay, all the way up to here. All right, you see that and how it closes right in line with that neck. And uh, unfortunately, 
So that's a lopsided inverse head and shoulders. So that would be the play. Um, and if it if it breaks above this level here, although this is a very short term support, um, but if it breaks above this, which would be basically this swing high right here, that's got quite a bit of room to run. I would actually take this trade tomorrow. Uh, like I said, if it opens in, uh, above our entry, you know, unless there's like some not any like unforeseen catastrophe, then I will go ahead and take this play and ride it out for a couple of reasons. One for the inverted head and shoulders, which is a little sloppy, I'll admit. Uh, but I'm still very bullish on Pfizer. I just might give myself uh, probably another week. So I wouldn't, I, I might I might actually spread out the risk. So I might do um, like a 50 call on uh, this Friday's expiration, uh, which would be, let me see, I'm really bad. I think it's the 18th, right? 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. I would do like a 50 call uh, for the for the Friday expiration. And I would do uh, probably also do a 50 call for the, or a, I think Pfizer trades in halves. So there might be like a 50.5. I might do the 50.5 uh, for next week. So I'm actually going to write that down um, because that is actually, uh, I like the way that one looks, the 50 call and the 50.5 call. Um, Okay, so that would be our long play for Pfizer, and this would be our down play. I'm, I'm not really expecting anything to be too negative on healthcare, so uh, let's jump over to AT&T real quick, because we're running out of time. And, okay, there we go. And that's on the daily. Um, AT&T was very bullish last week, and it, it blew our targets. And it actually bounced right off of our target, I believe. And then it ended the week over here. Okay, but we did uh, we did come out with, uh, sorry, this was the, this was last week, sorry. Right, oh my goodness. Let me zoom in on that. <clears throat> okay, so. Here we go. Okay, so I believe this is Monday right there. Okay, so Monday, and we basically just went up all the way Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then CPI Thursday and Friday was right there. And this is where we not only hit our resistance, which was a which was a long term resistance, but we also ran into this supply zone, and uh, it seems to be wicking off of that supply zone. So it doesn't seem like it's going to go through it, unless you get probably with tomorrow's print, we might get uh, if it was uh, if it does come out a, a positive uh, PPI then we might get um, enough push to go through, at least through this um, supply zone and probably hit somewhere around 20s. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that's our trade plan right there. It's actually right, it, it did close above, so there should have been an entry. So I'll take it again. I didn't take any entries today. I was having issues. I think I kind of still am having issues with my... Um, profile on x-rays so I didn't take it on the app um, but uh, I uh, I do think that this is obviously um, uh, there's there might be some bullish room tomorrow uh, enough that it might go to the top of that zone or at least to that fib right there which is the 50 fib so based on how it opens tomorrow I just might like you know enter all of these trades tomorrow Wednesday uh, instead of, um, you know, on Monday and Tuesday. When you get CPI and PPI and, and big economic reports um, or the like coming out on uh, during the week, it's actually, I mean, it's more risky because it's basically a, a, a high volatility event. Uh, so it's very, it, it, it sometimes behooves you to wait it out. I didn't do it for that reason. Uh, I did it because I just came in, like I said, from a, from a, from a long trip. And I didn't, you know, get all my affairs sort, sorted out on uh, uh, in this morning enough to, you know, focus on trading. So that was why I was unable to take any of these trades. But I will definitely uh, jump in tomorrow.
if uh, things look positive. Okay, so those were the four tickers that we uh, said that we were going to um, analyze on <clears throat> in the month of October. And the other, if I can recall what they were, um, Onset Medical, I can't remember if it was OMT or OST. I think it might be OST. Yeah, Outset Medical. There it is. Oh, oh wait a minute. Where did it go? So maybe it was OM. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, man, this laptop is just really slow. Okay, so there's Outset Medical. And the reason why I picked this uh, is because um, I basically heard... Uh, some good news on it I, and, and it did have like very good earnings and I actually like what this company does but that's got nothing to do with trading uh, unless you're doing it for the long term but there that's a very bullish you know bounce you know who whatever you know trading experience you have I mean that's that's pretty solid right there uh, and it definitely took out this high as you can see these are all the highs that I marked uh, I did this on mobile, and I, up I uploaded it, but it didn't look very well, so I, I um, actually took it down. But it took out that high, it took out that high, it took out that high, and, sorry, uh, it didn't take out this high. It's kind of bouncing off of this high. So that is actually my entry point, as if, if you can see right there. I'm going to zoom in again. Um, that is basically, because this is on the daily, that is basically, these are two that I added in November, um, uh, just because I had the time and I was on mobile when I read the article or heard the podcast. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a podcast, and um, and this is what it did on Monday. So it it opened up. You know, remember that this reported earnings on last Tuesday. So um, it was still bullish Monday and even today Tuesday, and uh, it did not break our entry. So. Uh, this will have been a no trade as well. <clears throat> as you can see, I have to zoom in more. Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty close. Let me go ahead and drop down to the four hour. Okay. So it did not break our entry. So that's a no trade and actually bounced right off. And you can see how it wicked, you know, really hard. Uh, over here last week on Friday off of that level. So that's very, that's a, that looks like a very, very, very significant uh, resistance right there. Um, so it looks like a very good place to set an entry. Of course, I set this before. I set this uh, before the week started, actually, on Sunday night. So um, I'm still thinking that's, uh, that's pretty bullish. And there's some room to run here between the 19 and the 21. So I will also be, like I said, looking at this tomorrow, which I will have more time to focus on trading and keep my bullish position on OM. And the other one, uh, oh, I'm not sure if I wanted to do the four hour yet, but okay. I think it was TWI, which is Titan International. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so here's the plays that I set up on Titan. Uh, and that one, did not do uh, very well to the upside, uh, but it hasn't done bad enough that uh, it's a play to the downside. Now, I did these very quick, and I did them on mobile, which is actually one of the first, or if you look at my entry, entry to trading video, you know, one, one of the things I stress the, you know, you know, very, very uh, strongly is do not trade on mobile. Uh, I didn't have the option, but I didn't trade these. I was setting it up because I w was expecting to be able to come in with enough time this week to actually review these plays, but uh, obviously that did not happen. So um, I I probably skipped a few over a few levels, and that's also why there's if this is a no trade. Uh, I probably skipped over a few levels in here, and um, that's why it's just been uh, you know kind of bouncing around like ping pong, and um, I haven't uh, gotten entry signal, and that's fine. You know uh, sometimes it happens, and it's actually better. Uh, because if you're just going to have, you know, a stock bouncing around, uh, you know, buying options is definitely what you do not want to do. Um, back to the theta that we reviewed in that other video, uh, the, the Greeks video, <clears throat> theta is, is not something 
that um, is something that you will definitely lose if it chops around. Look at this. I mean, it's been since the beginning of November when it closed at fifth, the end of, yeah, end of October, beginning of November, it closed at 1514. And it's currently 15 days later at 1486. You know, uh, if you had taken a call on this thing, the only day you might have had some profit would have been this one. And any other day, you know, Theta would have just killed you um, because it's just been bouncing around. And the closer you get to expiration, then uh, the quicker your option contracts lose value if they don't reach and or break past the strike price. So this is uh, definitely not something you want to see on an option or, or yeah on an option tradable chart I guess uh, but let me zoom out here uh, because this is definitely uh, and this is hmm, trying to find a pattern here for you guys uh, not much I thought it was a flag for a bit but mm, no this is not looking. Uh, I use this as an example to basically just draw uh, support and resistance levels. So I'll just go ahead and do that on another video. But um, uh, that's what this, uh, that's what I used this ticker for. Now the longs are still, the, the long and the shorts are still there, but I doubt that they're going to hit, uh, you know, this week uh, or maybe even next week. So I'll just do another video um, probably in uh, December, reviewing how to, you know, basically going over our steps, our, 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 yeah, each step in our process, which I believe I outlined in the spy chart. So let me, <clears throat> to end this video, let me get out here, okay, and even go to the weekly on spy, okay, I'll have to clean these charts up. Okay, so let me find where my text is. This is not what TradingView is for, but um, I put my text of all my steps in here. And, huh, I can't seem to find them. This has already happened to me before. <clears throat> but I do remember that I um, I created a PowerPoint and um, I'll basically review each one of those steps at the end of December, the end of the year uh, for you guys. Yeah, that's not here. I don't, I honestly don't know where it went. Uh, but basically it was, okay, so you grab a chart, you know, and you look at two areas, technicals and fundamentals. Technicals is, okay, yep, this is an uptrend, definitely. Okay, um, of course, this is on the weekly time frame, but this is an uptrend for sure. Uh, and then you start, what, what kind of technicals do you look at? Well, you look at the trend, uptrend in this case, not from here on. From here on, it's definitely a downtrend. But, you know, just to get a clean area of the chart, okay, so this is an uptrend. Okay, and then number two, you start drawing swings, which are important price levels. Uh, uh, or actually you start drawing support and resistance levels and one uh, way to draw support and resistance levels is to look for swings uh, because swings are important price levels so that's a swing high that's a swing high that's a swing high that's a swing high and it keeps going right so all of those are swing highs swing highs swing highs swing high swing high for example you don't look at anything in here because this is not a swing high it's not higher than this high it's lower than that high so that's not considered a swing high so it's not considered an important level at this time frame and you keep drawing those and those are going to be your important levels you also draw your swing lows okay so if this were a downtrend then you would draw <coughs> all the swing lows number two the second way to draw uh, or to locate support resistance levels is to look for areas with many touches which kind of stand out to you because uh, for example, actually right here where I left it, look at this area right here, the 210 on SPY. I mean, it was definitely resistance uh, in 2015. It was resistance over here again in 2015. It was resistance again here, 2016. And then it broke above here in 2017. All right. And it didn't go as low here, but it got pretty close to that 210 level. 
all right? And it definitely wicked very close to it in uh, 2020 with the pandemic, right? In March of 2020. So that is definitely a support level that stands out. You can see another one uh, right around here, okay? You can see it was support, 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 and uh, barely broken resistance, and then resistance right here, and then resistance, which was barely broken right there. Okay, so that's another important level, the 281. And then once you've got swings for levels and you've got multiple touches for levels, then you want to try to confirm that by using the FIB tool, or at least that's my strategy. Um, you grab the FIB tool and then you draw, okay, from the lowest, you know, and this is depending on the time frame that you're going for, from the lowest point to the highest point during that time. And usually... Uh, that will line up with important levels. And so you can see that there's an important 185 level right here. Okay. And it definitely looks like it was good support there, there, and there. Again, support three times. All right. So once you've added all your levels, okay, you continue with your technical analysis and you look at um, price patterns, right? Uh, so the best price pattern I can show you here, and I haven't been finding many of those lately in the individual tickers, but I do have one very big one on SPY here, which I'm going to try to bring into focus. All right, here, it's this downward uh, megaphone, um, okay, which you can see is outlined by this bottom trend line and that top trend line. So it just kind of... Once it reached this high, this all-time high, it dropped, bounced up, it dropped, bounced up, it started dropping, it didn't quite reach, it could still bounce up, and then it could drop again, okay? And if you find price patterns like that, this is one of the weakest ones, but you know, you got your inverse head and shoulders, your head and shoulders, your bull flags, your bear flags, your ascending and descending triangles and wedges and whatnot, then that just basically adds uh, to your support levels, you know, it basically tells you, okay, okay, then if, if this is a support level right here, <clears throat> you know, because this is a downtrending channel and it hits this level, which is also a support level, which I've drawn here. Let me zoom in on this. Okay. So that, that's how you, you bring these, uh, these things together so that you get a higher probability of a trade working out. Okay, so let's look at this right here. Okay, this is obviously quite in the past because this is a weekly, but this was coming down off the top of the channel. Look at how strongly that gets rejected right there. And then it just dives here, bounces a little bit, and it hits down here again. Okay, so this is definitely a channel that's forming here, and it reacts to it. And there's also a support level here and here. Okay, once this thing bounces above that support level, so it's bouncing above this horizontal line here as support and above uh, this dynamic or downtrending um, megaphone here, then you can have a higher probability of being right that this is going to head up towards the top of this channel. Okay, Once it hits the top, it's very probable that it's going to head back down. Okay, And then it back it goes back up, okay? When it's at its high, it's obviously the highest probability is that it will go back down, okay? And how do you determine which is the highest point or the lowest point? Well, you look for those support and resistance levels, okay? And that's why we draw the support and resistance levels based on different um, uh, different types of, uh, of, of statistics, the FIB statistics, uh, the multiple touches, and the uh, swing highs and swing lows. Okay, so once you've uh, identified if any price uh, patterns on the chart, then you go and you look for indicators. So I remember that we mentioned, so if you come in here and you add, let's say, you know, one of the ones that people use a lot, uh, the MACD indicator, uh, so it throws it down here at the bottom, and this is going up, okay, and this makes sense. The MACD is showing some momentum to the upside, now, of course, it will probably, think about it this way. It's still on its way up, okay, to the top of this downtrending line. It might have some more room to go until it, oops, until it reaches the top of that trend line. 
which is probably when this MACD is going to hit this center line. What in the world? Hold on a second. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so it's probably the, the moment that the price on the price chart hits the top of that trend line will probably be when this MACD indicator is somewhere near this zero line. And that is where, when it's, you know, it's crunch time. It's either going to hit that top trend line and then head back down, which means that this MACD is going to do basically this. It's going to start curling up as it, as it is right now, and then it's going to head back down. Okay, and it might do it again. And then when it hits the top of that trend line, it's going to just head back down. Or it's just going to bust right through if there is enough positive market news for it to do so. Okay. So <clears throat> that is the whole reason of why we draw these support levels and we uh, look for patterns um, because we want to find out which is the area of highest probability that a trade, if it goes up above this trend line or down to the, you know, to the bottom of that uh, megaphone, it will be uh, profitable in either direction. Okay, because if you take a trade somewhere in the middle here, then you have a lower probability of this going up or down. Okay, and you could make some money. Definitely, there's money to be made from here to here, but it could also just you know break up. Okay, so uh, once you do that, then you look. You've got your trend. You've got your support levels. You've got your price patterns, and you've got your indicators. And then once you're done, that is basically the wrap up for the technical analysis part and then we move into the fundamentals and in fundamentals we look for market news sector or industry news uh, upgrades downgrades economic data that also moves markets um, and um, and we add that to the mix and that is how we decide which is a more likely profitable trade or which direction would be a more likely profitable trade so in this case it's probably more likely that you don't take a trade here and wait for it to actually reach the top of this trend line and wick off of it the way it did here or breaks above it for the long uh, for the long call or the bullish calls. All right, so uh, that's where I'm going to close it off at. And I hope these reviews are helping the, the trading strategy sink in. And, um, and, and I really do expect that I will be able to place these trades tomorrow finally so i will see you guys um, <clears throat> uh, in the next video